Okay, Matthew chapter 18. At the same time, the disciples unto Jesus saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? What a, you know, what an amazing thing. <clears throat> Even the disciples had, you know, who's the greatest? I mean, things don't change. You got the church today, you got people think that they're the greatest. They got the greatest church. They got the greatest pastor. They got the greatest song leader. They got the greatest piano player. They got, you know. What happened to Jesus? What happened to God? And it's kind of funny because, and I don't mean funny, ha ha, there is God, there is Jesus, and they walk up to him and say, well, who's the greatest? <laughs> I mean, wasn't that Muhammad Ali, I'm the greatest, I'm the best, I think it was? You're dead. Alexander the Great, he's dead, still in the grave. Herod the Great, he's dead, probably in hell. Jesus, he died. He was buried. He rose again, seated at the right hand of the Father. I guess I know who's the great. Ever been in the workplace? There's always that one person, they're the greatest. Oh, the whole company could not survive without them. You know, and you had in school, you had that one great pupil. You couldn't be great. Because you couldn't match yourself up to Jesus. And in fact, people at the great white throne judgment are going to be weighed with the books and everything they've done against Jesus and they're going to be at fault. Except those whose names are in the, in the Lamb's book of life. But that's not saying they're great. That's saying they just obeyed God. Jesus called a little child unto him. So Walter, here's a little child. And set him in the midst of them. Today, children are ignored. They're a problem. They're problematic. They're troublesome. They interfere. Let the school take care of them. Let the, let the Sunday school teacher get them for two hours and a whole entire week. What do you mean, my child? Uh, you, you told him in Sunday school, yeah, one hour. After attendance and Tootsie Roll giving and, and calming them down, and you get the five minute Bible lesson for an entire week. Oh, you mean the school, public school said they got 25 to 50 kids in one classroom? Yeah, your child's going to be the best. Got to a point in America today, you know, your child comes so burdened, just, just abort him. Not realizing that child goes to heaven. You talk about, I don't know, was it thousands, millions? I, I don't pay attention. But all the children that have been aborted over the years, they're, gonna, they're, they're in heaven right now. And they're going to stand against Margaret Sanger. And all the murdering doctors and all the murdering nurses. And all the people that, smoke, that support that mur mur murdering uh, agency. And Jesus calls a little child. He said to him, Verily I say unto you. No, he takes that child and puts it, and he doesn't, he doesn't even address the child. He says, Except you be converted and become as little children, ye, sh ye shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Big warning, 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 exclamation point, warning, 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 nuclear blast, get underneath the school desk, warning, warning, warning. That's not church age doctrine. This is the Gospel of Matthew. We've been talking about it's a Jewish book of the Jewish king. This is not the way of salvation. We do not become as little children to be saved. We put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ as our Savior. Uh, probably, probably some idiot somewhere. You know, you must be born again and be like little children. It's probably somewhere. John three three and Matthew eighteen three. <laughs> he said, "Why is that important? Because we're going to come to the Great Commission pretty soon at the end of Matthew." 
And nothing in Matthew has been about the church age, but we're going to run to the great. Every church has a great commission to Matthew. That's not our book. It's never been our book. The closest thing that we have to a gospel as books for the church is the gospel of John. Followed by, you want to go Luke. John is the gospel of Jesus Christ as king. Luke, Jesus Christ as a man. Mark, Jesus Christ as a servant. Matthew, Jesus Christ as king. And he's never, never called king of the church. You got it all wrong. And when you see the king, oh, my king, you know, he's not your king. He's your husband. Whosoever, there's a whosoever, therefore shall humble himself as this little child. The same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. That's not salvation. And that's the Jewish, that's the millennium. The Christian will get a right by suffering an inheritance, not a greatness. And you take that little child, he's innocent, he's dependent, he's trustworthy. I feel sneezing. You take that little child, you can throw up in there, he's going to trust dad to catch him. Oh, I knew it was coming. Whosoever shall receive such receive one such little child in my name, receiveth me. That's not salvation. Don't go out there adopting and fostering and carrying children in the name of Jesus. And think you're going to be saved. Now, who has adoption and foster homes? The Catholics. I know Baptists have more overseas, but I'm not talking about the Baptists. I'm talking about the Catholics that will put their faith in trust. Hey, we have an orphanage for kids. Look at what Mother Teresa is doing for all the people. You know, she's got to be in heaven. None of she didn't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. She's not going anywhere. But hell. Don't say, you know, we adopted 26 kids and, you know, you're not going to heaven. You're probably going to end up in, in the welfare line, but you're not going to heaven. Even if you do it in, in Christ, we're not in the church age. And we come up to the book of Acts as we transition to the Gentiles. There are going to be a bunch of Jewish people who are going to receive the Messiah. They're going to put their faith and trust in Jesus. And they're going to be thrown out of their home, thrown out of their jobs, thrown out of Jerusalem. And the children will need to be taken care of and helped. The same thing is going to happen in the tribulation period. There will be children born in the tribulation. There will be children in the, in the tribulation period. They're going to need help. And the only help the devil is going to get to it. His mom is going to have to get the 666. And the little child is going to get 666. You know what got me the other day? I realized the innocent. I don't know if I ever thought about this. But the day of the rapture or night. There will be no, if the, if the tribulation period happens right after the rapture, and we don't know if there's a time break, but if the tribulation happens soon after the rapture, there are no children in the rapture. I would say, this day and age with sins and all that, I would say 10 and under. Though kindergartens are being taught sexual perversion, and drag queens and all that. So, if they are under the age of innocence and there is no sin imputed to them, like David said, they go just as much as we go. What do they do with those boarded babies? They're going. Can you imagine that? A, 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 a unborn child that's nothing to the world. In the event of the rapture, that mother may be lost. That baby's coming out of that womb. 
I can imagine an abortion doctor saying they're about to do it. They're about to abortion. They're about to kill that baby. In the moment the Trump sounds and all that are alive or caught up and rain up in the clouds, that baby's not there in the womb no more. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Nurse, check the books. The baby's gone. Do I still get my money? So if you become as a little child, or if you receive a little child in the name of Jesus, that's not salvation. But whosoever shall offend one of these little ones, which believe in me. Now, you can find this in Paul's doctrine, in his books. If you offend, if, if wolves come in, if there are deceptions, that you can find Paul in the church. There will be. And we are called the children of God. So we could take verse 6. It'd be better for a millstone that's a very heavy rock used for grinding. We're hanged about his neck, and they were drowned in the depths of the sea. And then he'd die and go to hell. He may get a water death, or he'll end up in the, in the flames of hell. We'll read in a moment. You better not deceive any of God's children. Jehovah Witnesses. And there are different degrees of punishments in hell. There, there's a place called the lower hell. That's gonna be your that's gonna be your mother church, your clergy, your your priests. And come up to come up to the row, come up to the front row, come up to the prayer altar to say this prayer. <laughs> This wafer, this, this drink is the literal body and blood of Jesus. All your perversion, all your, your TV evangel, well, not I shouldn't say, most of your TV evangel, your women preachers and all that. It would be better for you go jump, go jump in, in the ocean with cement shoes. But then if you're lost, you're going to end up in hell. But what Jesus said, if you're going to deceive the children, you're going to deceive the church, you're going to have them believe something else and lost and all that, you, you might as well just go commit suicide. Don't live any longer. And if Jesus says, well, end their life, end your life, if you're a deceptor, if you're a wolf, oh, can you imagine what it's going to be for you at the judgment? Whoa. For a horse, woe means stop. Pay attention now. Jesus just said, stop, you horse. Unto the world. Okay. This is for the world. See, Jesus, the Bible, the Holy Spirit will tell you who he's talking to. Offenses. And boy, we are in the, we are in the offenses today. He called me a he, she called me a she, and they can use them proper pronoun. That baker over there is selling gingerbread men. And that college got all upset and all that, and everybody went over there and bought gingerbread men. Ha! You know what you ought to do in America, this is five cents, and don't cost you anything, I'll pay the bill. Shut every university, every college, shut them down! And all the deception they've been teaching those children, put millstones about their necks and cast them in the ocean. They're the ones teaching, I don't know what sex I am. I can be transgender. I can teach sex to the... Those are the ones doing it. The lawyers are ruining this nation. Drown them after you give them the gospel. And don't ever open up a university or college ever again. Burn them down. Get rid of them. Because they're causing an offense. Education in America. Where on earth do they get? I don't know what sex I am. And you're offending me. Hey, you see? What happened to English, math, social studies, history? 
And don't like that book. It's offensive. Black lives matter. All right, then go back to Africa. That's where the black people are. Go back to the dark continent. And black lives matter. No, why are you staying here? Why are you ruining our country? Defund the police. All right, move you to New York City. Right in the middle of the ghettos. Right in the middle of the crime. And then see if you want to defund the city. Don't you ever call a cop if you want to defend the city. If you want to defund the police, don't ever, don't ever, don't ever call 911. Never! I'm offended. Shut up! I'm offended that you're offended over stupidity. Shut up. Shut up. But Jesus said, offenses will come. Here they are. Things are going to happen. So be it. Man that's born of a woman, the full, full days, uh, was it full, full of troubles? Whatever it is, hey, I don't like it. These people, you, you read about, they are attacking and some way put in, in, in hospitals, even killing fast food workers. You didn't have a ketchup packet. I didn't get a tomato. What do you mean you don't have that flavor no more? You can't even go to, you can't even go to a fast food restaurant and know what's going on. You can't go watch a movie without someone pulling out a gun. I'm offended. Boy, brother, I tell you, Paul wrote to Timothy, said, it's going to get worse in the church. Pretty soon it's going to be Sunday school teacher ran out of tissy rolls. I didn't get to turn to the bounce house. They didn't sing happy birthday to me. For it must need that Offenses come. It's going to come. It's going to happen. Who said that? Jesus said that. But woe, stop, to the man to whom the offense comes. Now, just because I offended you that I didn't order enough mustard packets, that's not what we're talking about. Verse 6 is deception, lying. False teachers deceiving the children. <laughs> All these crimes against these children today, you're going to stand before Jesus saved or law. You're going to have to give an account. You know what Jesus wrote in the law? If at the mouth of two or three witnesses, kill them. That's a mighty strong, that's a mighty strong law. And I'll tell you right now, I know something about that law, very personal. Some people know, some people don't know. I, I, I pulled, I'd be the one to pull the switch. That person violated the law. That person violated what God said. That person offended a young person. <clears throat> You're saved. God will take care of you. You say, you would really do that? Didn't I call the police? Don't mess with me. Because I tell you right now, you sin and gross to sin, anything like that, like that, you're going. Bye. See you later. Get out of my life. Like if it's a if it's a thing for the police, I'll call the police. Because you're not going to offend anybody I try witnessing to. You're not going to offend my my, my Christian brethren. I got a pastor all upset because I offended him. Why? Because it was a church that believed in any Bible, every Bible, every Bible. There were people that had King James Bible, they didn't even know what they were believing. So I left that church. I didn't leave it quietly. I sent everybody to their home address with my return address on it, not my P.O. box, and gave them gospel tracts on what their Bibles say compared to the King James Bible, and I upset that preacher. I even gave him extra information, you know, about uh, their tracks about good men of the faith and all that. I offended. That's a good offense. Bible says, rebuke, exhort, in season, out. Of That's not offense. When you tell somebody they're going to go to hell and their beliefs, and their religion, or their non-beliefs, or their atheism, or their agnosticism, if you're going to go to hell because you have not put your faith and trust in Jesus, you offended me. That's tough. I don't see anywhere in the Bible you get milk and Oreo cookies. 
You hurt my feelings. Oh, good. Uh, they hurt Jesus when they beat him. But woe unto the man whom offenses come, and we've been talking about deceiving and lies. That's offense. Have you, dis have you offended your people of your nation as a leader of government by your life? You offended people. Romans 17. All right. Wherefore, if thy hand or foot offend thee, now this is not to be taken literal. G Jesus is showing you right now the extent on how serious this is. Cut them off. D don't go cutting your hand and foot off. He say, listen, and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into, into life halted or maimed. Rather than having two hands and two feet to be cast into everlasting, there is a everlasting fire. But we're in Matthew again. We're under the law. And if you commit adultery in the law, there is no offering. If you violated a child under the law, there is no offering. So it would be just as well for you to cut off that part of your body that's offending you than rather having both of them and going into hell. But if you want to run the church age to that, don't go be cutting off your hands and cutting off your feet. Because you don't go to hell by that. You go to hell by rejecting Jesus Christ. Again, error in Matthew of the church age, not the Jew. Hell is so serious to Jesus that he gives an illustration. Chop off your hand and your feet if that's what your sin is doing. I'm telling you right now, with the Southern Baptist Church and some of your Baptist churches right now, and your, your, your priest of the Catholic Church, you need to cut off the penis from some of this activity they're doing. Southern Baptist Church, you just had a few months ago. All these people, they, they were having sexual problems. They had, couldn't control their zippers. I bet they're saying, I'm glad it wasn't my feet or my foot. <laughs> yeah, but your foot carried you there. Your hand touched a part of body that you weren't supposed to touch. Priest. Mormons, they got more wives than what the state, what the government law says to be. Hey, you're touching something you shouldn't be touching called adultery. Thank God you're not under the law that you can believe on Lord Jesus Christ and be saved, confess your sins, and then find out which wife is really your wife and get rid of the others. You don't believe me. Is that what they did in uh, Nehemiah? I know a preacher, oh, no, no divorce, no divorce, no divorce. And we went to no, no, Nehemiah. <laughs> Where they got rid of their outlandish women. Boy, he didn't like that chapter. And try to dance around it. But this is not the church age. I'll tell you what the church age is. You got a problem with your hand or foot? The Bible says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all sins and knock that sin off. And if you can't knock that sin off, battle that sin to the day you drop dead. Well, you're not going to hell. And I ain't giving you a license to sin either. And if I, I offend thee, Whosoever looked upon a woman and lust after his heart has already committed adultery with her. Notice how the eye was separate from the hand and foot. You could commit adultery and not use your hand and not take your feet. You can do it with your eyeballs. You can do it with your computer. You can do it with, with the magazines. You can do it by going to the beach. In America today, you can do it when they're in the grocery store. If I pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes and cast into hell fire. Jesus Christ is the original hell fire preacher. He says in verse 8, it's an everlasting fire. Now it's quite an interesting because if you go back to chapter 5 of Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, 29, after he got done talking about adultery and forgiving your brother, He says, if thy right eye, verse 29, uh oh, there's the eye, <clears throat> if thy right eye offend thee, there's the offense, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it's profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, 
and not that the whole body shall be cast into hell. Here's the hell. If thy right hand offend thee, cut it off, cast it from me, for it be profitable for thee, that one of your members be, should be perished, that that whole body should not cast into hell. Your whole body. That's like a fire. And he's been talking about marriage and been talking about adultery. That's a verily, verily. That's mentioned just about the same time as the birthday of Jesus. Other places, three or four times in the gospel. But this is Matthew. This is not church age doctrine. Don't you go into the lives of seeing church age and say, Oh, now you got a problem with your hand. Pop it off. You got a problem with your eyeball. Pop it out. I don't know right. I guarantee somewhere, someone, there's a religion like that somewhere. I didn't say the Baptist church. I said it's probably religion. I mean, you got a bunch of monkeys, I mean, monks running around, they abstain themselves. That's foolish. Verse 10, 18, 10. Take heed that you despise not one of these little... That's what the whole context is meant. It's about deceiving the little ones. You're going to deceive them today if you're going to have any kind of sexual relations with them. And the fact is, America now is talking about that you're going to be pretty soon going to be okay to do a Muhammad. You say, what's that? Muhammad married a woman twice or not three times younger than he was. It's going to be perfectly legal pretty soon in America for an old man to marry a young woman. Probably do what the Muslims do, uh, take her by force. I don't care if the government makes illegal laws. I don't care if America stands against the Bible. It's still sin. No matter how long the Lord takes to, to come. What the Lord's got on his calendar, what if it's still a lot more years ago? <laughs> For I say unto you that heaven... Their angels, their angels, little ones, do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Now that verse, you, it does not come out and say, that verse looks like there are guardian angels for children. Problem is, before you go run to Catholicism, it says those angels are in heaven with the Father. They're not here on earth. I'm telling you, I raised two children. And I've, I personally had, I don't know about my wife, but I've, I've had episodes, I've been sitting in one room doing something. And I'm going to say the Lord, the Holy Spirit, I don't know which one, get up. Why? I said, shut up, and I said, get up and go to the other room. I'm okay. And there's one of my children holding a knife. <laughs> uh, can I kindly have that? <laughs> uh, Henry, that don't belong in that socket. Give me those scissors. I've had many times with my children. I just I don't know if it's God, Jesus, or the Holy Spirit, or all three. You just you need to you need to check things out right now. But then again, I've had times in my life where I've gotten a red light, and got mad, and wonder what did the Lord protect me from? Guardian red lights. There are some stories you hear about parents with their children. You guys say there have to be angels, but they're not here. They're in heaven, and if they are in heaven and know what's going on with a the child, then people in heaven know what's going on. For the Son of Man, that's Jesus, come to save that which is lost. And Luke 19, I think 18 has, he's come to seek and to save that which is lost. Right now in Matthew, and in Luke where it's written, that's written to Jews. 
He told the disciples with that Greek would remember, you know, I'm not here for those Greeks. I'm not here for those Gentiles. And when their commission was go all to the Jews, not even a half breeds. Samaria. How think he? Uh oh. Now we're going to change the subject completely now. We're going to talk about the lost. Verse 11 starts a whole new subject. If a man have a hundred sheep, oh, that, that's your Baptist church right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, fifteen, seventy-five. I had a hundred people in church today. Seventy-five got saved this week. Twenty-five was at the fellowship. We went, I, I seen again on this church. I don't know if you have another pastor, but uh, we went over to the pastor's house. We were invited for a Christmas meal and all that. The pastor's wife made a special thing, wanted the people in the church to come and to celebrate Christmas. Now, listen, I will fellowship, but I won't do it in the name of Christmas. I was telling somebody, somebody and we went to Christmas fellowship at, at, at a pastor's, at, I mean, at, at a brethren's house of the church, and I went caroling with the church. But you don't believe in Christmas. No, I don't. I believe in fellowshipping. I believe that those old people should have somebody come in and, and, and minister to her. We had one woman sit in that place. She sat in the front row and she sat for the songs that you know, I, you know, I never heard of, but they were, they were beautiful. She was singing right there with us. She needed that. One guy came up to us and said he was a deacon of one of his churches and all that. I guess his church doesn't visit him no more. I'm going to get to that. And he just wanted to thank Pastor for coming out Tuesday. And he wanted to thank us for coming out to sing to him. I said, sir, thank you for coming up and telling us that. We went to a, to a fellowship, and the guy told me, <laughs> I was mocking the carols. I gave the guy who told me this through. He said, you were the life of the party, <laughs> if you only knew. <laughs> I behaved myself, and I was against Christmas, but I, I was the life of the party. <laughs> if I had a hundred sheep, they must be Baptists. They counted them. One of them go astray. All right, there's a song, 99, 90, whatever it is. Bring them in, bring them in. That's not about the that's not about the sheep that's out. That's about bringing other sheep. They're not sheep if they're not in the fold. They're goats. No lost man's a sheep. No one in the church is a sheep. No one. We're not called sheep. We're called the bride of Jesus Christ. We are called Christians. Never sheep. That's Israel's term. Learn it. Get it. Write it down. This is not us because we're not sheep. But you can, you can spiritually apply it. I'm going to spiritually apply it. Does he not leave the 99 and goeth into the mountains and seeketh that which is going astray. Let me ask you a question. Verse 18. Let, let's spiritualize for the church. Have you ever had anybody leave your church and you ever had the pastor go after them? I left plenty of churches. Not one pastor has come knocking on my door and ringing my telephone. No, I take that back. One. You want to find out? I said, listen, I said, you guys are King James Bible believing church, but you change the scriptures secretly out in the open. Matthew, I mean, John chapter 14, I have a mansion, not a cottage, whatever. I, I, I can, and that's one of the first churches of King James, but they, but they changed the scriptures. And Mary, did you know? Yes, she did know. Didn't you read Luke? Gabriel told her everything. There was no question. How come pastors will go out and bring your friends in, bring your relatives in, bring your co-workers, bring in people you hate? Okay. So, pastor, where is this guy? Where is, and I'm not trying to find out for gossip or anything. I pray for this man. Where's Dylan? Well, he's gone. Gone where? I don't really know. Why not? I think he's gone with it, you think? Is that what kind of shepherd you are? 
which Peter does call you the chief and uh, the chief shepherd is chief Jesus. That means you're a shepherd. Is that the sheep are gone? But 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 now you become a billy goat. But 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 but. Oh, you're a great pastor, uh, but you don't know where the sheep are. And how many times we're going to sing, bring them in. Why bring in goats to get saved? The goats will, who get saved are going to leave, and you're not going to care about them. You're going to bring in more goats. You're a goat herder, not a sheep herder. I had one church. I'm going to tell you exactly what. We went there. We were going there for a long time. I was even going to school. And we were going up to West Hartford. The pastor and I, we get the ride and, and go there. I was, I was in the prison. No, I wasn't in the prison ministry yet. Uh, I was going there. Everything fine. I go to church. This click family came. They came back from somewhere. And listen, I'm the new, I come out of a worldly, ungodly church. Not this church. Uh, church I was at least and I were in before. And well, we're going to vote these people in for membership. Everybody for it, raise your hand. I, I raised my hand. I don't know. <laughs> these people want to be part of the church. Amen. And he looked at me, pointed to me, my wife and I right there before. You're not a member of this church. Lisa said to me in the car, I said, what are you going to do? Hey, he said, we're not members, so I guess we don't come back. And we were out of church for months. We were going to different churches. and like, He said I wasn't a member of that church. I, and then I, I, we went to this one church. We found out that, you know, there are churches in there. You have to be voted in as a member to be officially a member of that church. And, and, and I took the pastor off. I said, excuse me, pastor. I don't, I'm not going against you. But I thought when I was saved, I thought I became a body of Jesus Christ. He goes, you did. I said, Holy Spirit came and dwelled me. He goes, yeah. I said, I have to be molded in to be a member of a church even though I'm saved? He goes, yeah. So time goes back. Things were going bad for us. And Lisa said, why don't we just go back to that church? I said, <laughs> she said, you heard what the message was. You know what a member is. I said, all right. I went with the pastor in his office and all that. I said, hey, I said, I said, this is the story. This is what happened. You said I wasn't a member, so I took it as I'm not a member. I didn't know what membership was. No one ever, you, you never explained to me what member was. Well, I thought you fell off the face of the earth. Really? By the way, that guy has now, as far as the ministry goes, he has retired from the ministry and handed it over to, uh, you don't care. You're a hireling. You're just as bad as preachers that go out everywhere preaching in other churches and, and having, with other churches and leaving the sheep behind. Which I know one pastor that does that and his sheep were dying in his church and they were having problems. But he's everywhere else. But for weddings and funerals and all that, there he is in his splendor and pride. You're not, you're not a shepherd. Jesus said, you go in the mountains, you seek that which is lost. And if so be that he find it. It doesn't say you're going to find him. There may be some that leave, you're not going to find him. You're, they're not going to have everything to do against you. And I've heard pastors say they try calling, they try knocking on their doors. You just don't want to have anything to do. Okay. Did you make the effort? Verily I say unto you, he rejoices more of that sheep, already saved, he's not a goat, than the ninety and nine which have not a share. And listen, that sheep could leave because of misunderstanding. That sheep could leave, what if the, the Jehovah Witnesses got a hold of them? You mean you don't care if that sheep has fallen off to the Jehovah Witnesses where they don't believe Jesus is God and all that mess? You don't care if that sheep is now hanging out with the goats and Satan? Why don't you just retire out of the ministry and find someone who does care? Because the ministry is not all about you. It's about the people that sit in those pews. 
And if you're not going to care for those sheep, those people in the pews, you don't deserve their money in the collection plate. Go get yourself a job. Because the ministry does not have a time clock. I had a pastor one time, I'm not going to say where, but you know, I was in the hospital. You can call it a bit of distance from the church. I'm going to have this guy take over this area because it's just awfully too far from me. But you can go to Georgia and you can go to Alabama and you can go upstate Florida for your pastoral conferences, but you can't visit a sheep in a hospital? And by the way, you're going to send somebody to do hospital duty who has taught Sunday school wrong, has wrong doctrine, and doesn't even know what he's talking about? You hireling. And you say, bring them in, bring them in. So when you go to your pastor buddy fellowship, I had a hundred in mine. I got two hundred in mine. And I only had fifty. Hey, pastors, how many sheep left the flock have you brought back? And these are the same pastor conferences where they go in their hotel room and get the X-rated movies. They go down to the local pub and get, get drinks or they even get socialized with the prostitute. I have been told about those pastoral meetings. I know enough pastors to know about it. You don't want to know what your pastor does at those places. Ask the Southern Baptists. They'll tell you. Ask the Catholics. They'll tell you. I wish that man shut up. More than more of the sheep than the 99 which had not astray. That one sheep left for whatever reason. We went looking. Even so, it is not the will of your Father. Okay, what's the will of God? Which is in heaven. That one of these little ones, oh, we're still talking about children. Did you get that? Should perish. What's going on? What's Jesus saying? He's saying... Verse 6. But whosoever shall fed one of these little ones which believe in me, it'd be better for a millstone be hanging this hang about his neck than be drowned into a depth of sea. A little one has been taken out of your flock. He has been brought into a wolf. He's been brought into a religion. He's been brought into the world. It's your job, Pastor, to go find him. How many, how many Christians? are unknowingly have been taken captive by the Jehovah Witnesses are there today and their pastors don't know and don't care. Or they may know, oh, they're the Jehovah Witnesses and don't try to get them. What did Jesus just say? It is not the will of your Father that in heaven that these one of these little ones should perish. We've been talking about the children. If one of your God's children in your flock, spiritually applying what we're saying, this is not the church, but I'm spiritually applying it to the church. If one of your members has been taken captive by a deceiver, by a liar, God in heaven does not want them to be so. He wants you to go get them. And it may take a lot of work for all the damage they're doing. It may take a lot of blood, sweat, tears, and prayer. Are you too busy, ready to count the flocks, decorate your church, have all kinds of kinds of things? You're too busy and out of town. You're going there, you're going here, you're going there, you're going there, you're here, where, here, here. this party, that party, this fellowship, that fellowship. We're going to build a fellowship hall. We're going to have all kinds of things. We're going to have bingo Tuesday night. And we're going Where are your hundred sheep? Right? Did it say hundred sheep? 
No. He said 99. All right, let's put that to percentages. All right, you may have 1% of the people in your church, they just, boom, they're gone. Whatever. How about the 99%? And out of that 99, one strays off by someone who's lied to him, someone who's deceived him. You're going to give account for that 99. Right, you're not going to give account for that one just goes off. Okay? It's not 100, is it? It's not 100%. But if you got 99% in your church and one of them is strayed, one of them has gone away because of a liar or a deceiver, and you don't go after them, the will of the Father is that you go get them, you bring them back, because the Lord doesn't want them to perish. That's Matthew, that's Old Testament. Because all a Christian has to do today is confess. But as a pastor of a church, if you don't seek that lost one who's been deceived, don't go crying about your 100, your 200, your 300, your 400, your 50, your 60, your 70. Because you have one that went away that's in trouble. You may have two that's going away that's in trouble. You may have three, in a, I mean a father, mother, and a child in a Jehovah Witness. You may have a father, a wife, two children in the Mormon church. You may have had a man married a Catholic is in the Catholic Church, or you may have a woman marry a, a Catholic man is in the Catholic Church now. Well, they shouldn't have married. Did they know not to marry them? Is it in your message separation? Are they hanging out with unsaved people and they got involved in the wrong thing? How come you didn't teach them? You shall have no, uh, with the same Corinthians, Concord with what's the, the godly and the unbeliever. All right, if you told them they get into trouble, they get into problems, that's their fault. But did you warn them? Or do you have a whole month? We're going to have a whole month of tithing. We're going to have a whole month of missionary week. We're going to have a whole month of Christmas. <laughs> Did you ever have a time of what Christians are supposed to do, what they're not supposed to do? Take it for granted they don't read the Bible because they don't. I, listen, I know King James, people that hold a King James Bible, open up a King James Bible in a church, and they don't even know what they're doing. They don't even care. But if they hear it in their ears out of your mouth, you're without excuse. They are now. Well, you said, we don't like what I say. That's tough. God told me to say it. 